Welcome to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. We purchased this EcoFlow Delta Pro power bank a couple of years ago when it came out on the market. The thing that caught my attention on this is the 30 amp receptacle on the front of it. At least at that time, it was the only one on the market like that, and it might still be. We do a lot of off-grid camping in our travel trailer, and we really liked the idea of being able to occasionally run the air conditioner and more than occasionally run the coffee pot when we were out in the boonies and not connected to shore power. So we bought it, and we use it, and we really like it. The downside, though, is this unit is not waterproof. The obvious way to use it is to set it outside the travel trailer and plug it in to where you would normally plug your shore power on the outside of the travel trailer. Problem with that is, even if we tuck it in underneath the edge of the travel trailer, it's still susceptible to splashing or flooding during a heavy downpour. It's also not very theft resistant when it's setting out underneath the side of your travel trailer. It fits inside the rear cargo hold of the trailer, but even then, if I ran the power to it, I had to leave the hatch open. And then not only is this susceptible to getting wet, but also the inside of the trailer is because the door is hanging open on the compartment. So I wanted a better solution, and I think I really found one. So come on along and see what I did and how I did it. And I think you'll like the end result. I sure do. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks a lot for watching. Let's get on with it. This is our Surveyor Legend, model 19 RBLE. So my idea is this, if I can fish a wire from inside the trailer, tying into where the shore power comes in through the sidewall and into the guts of the trailer, fish it over to this compartment somewhere and put another shore power type connection there, then I could plug from that into this and have this completely locked in at all times and out of the weather. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking to see where I can fish wires and uh, what I found is on this this little this little hatch here which is like a shower like a hand shower type of thing and so I looked in there see there's a hole this this hose disappears through a hole into the floor uh, there's a false wall and about I don't know five or six inches of dead space here to the rear of this uh, this compartment here this hose goes in there and disappears down that hole. So what I've done now is I've got my electric fish tape and I've got it into that hole and pushed it across the trailer. And I'm gonna look and see if I can see it over here. Okay, I see my fish tape. All right, so that does come through there. Show you what I found inside here. Now, there's two access places here. One was the, the little uh, vent from below the shower. And what we can see from there is another another hole down in the ground where wires and hoses go. This hole through there should be the same airspace as what I'm looking into from the loosened up belly skin at the back of the trailer. So that would be how I get up into the space below the shower. And then from there, you know, I've got the pantry uh, right next to the slide out. And below that was this, this trim panel that just sat right in there. That right there, that black stub coming in with the orange electric cable coming through that, that's shore power. And it goes over here and then, uh, I don't know, I guess it goes down into that hole and probably crosses over to behind me where the panel is over there, the breaker panel underneath the refrigerator. Uh, you can see that this also is free access through here to the area below the shower. So, I think we have all of the pieces of a viable path here for another uh, number 10 to fish it from this compartment right here, uh, underneath the shower, down, down through that hole there, and out the back where we can get a, a hold of the fish tape and pull it on through to the other side uh, to the... Uh, storage compartment and then what I'm going to plan on doing here is splice into the orange shore power there and I'm going to use a, a 30 amp transfer switch uh, that will automatically switch between shore power 
and my power bank. And there's plenty of room in here to mount the transfer switch. Uh, so I think I've got the, the full plan coming together here. Ah, uh, one more piece of the plan though. I'm also gonna uh, take a 120 volt, like a number 14 two over there and I'm gonna put an outlet in the compartment back there that's connected to my shore power so that when I'm on shore power, I can plug in the, the EcoFlow unit uh, right in that same cubby to recharge it off of shore power. All right, I'm ready to pull the wire. I've got some 14.2 that I'm gonna use for the plug. I'm gonna put a GFCI outlet in the cubby to recharge the Delta Pro unit. And I'm gonna put the number 10 to tie in to where the shore power comes in. So that'll be, that'll be powering the RV main breaker panel off of the Delta Pro. I'm gonna put them in underneath the furnace area and then back under the shower and down through that hole in the floor and try to get them accessible from the underbelly membrane at the back of the trailer which I loosened up. Oh, it's right here. I just need something to reach in there and grab it. wires. Uh, now I, I saw a fish tape in here. Oh, there it is. There's the fish wire. All right, now I just tape these together. Is the wire pole. So what I'm going to do right now, before I drill into the side of this compartment here, I just want to make sure that there's nothing in there. There is nothing, nothing on the back side of that to take a hit from a drill bit coming through. I think I need it right about here because it's going to have one of those doors, flip up door on it. Okay, so I put the fish tape down into there and I have to reach it over here. And so I need my little snag stick. And then I'll hand finish them with a regular old screwdriver, just snug them in. Just enough to squish that membrane out a little bit, but not enough to strip out my screws. All right. New. Now this is the transfer switch and, and this is quite possibly the worst packaging job I have ever seen. Okay, this looks pretty straightforward. We've got a couple of leads for shore power, a couple for the generator, and these ones to the distribution panel. And then they've got an equipment ground bus down here. It's not going to be too difficult to connect it up. I need to put some uh, Plant connectors onto that. We can use the right size. And this is staged, ready to roll. Right, this is the receptacle, which is just like the shore power connection on the outside of the 
travel trailer and I'm gonna put this inside the rear hatch. So I just need to trace out the, the spot to make the cut for this. That's about perfect. It just occurred to me that I have a perfectly good awning rolled up over my head and I'm standing here in the hot sun. Alright, my legs are not in the shade, but my head is. good. Now I gotta go find what I did with my, oh, all right, here's my old work box. anything wrong with that. Get my junk out of here. All right now I gotta put the transfer switch in over here. But before I forget and start cutting on wires I need to go and disconnect the power here. All right so we should be good. I believe we are dead, de-energized. Nothing, 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 nothing. AC breakers on off. I'm gonna put them off just in case. I'm trying to figure out where best to locate this box in there. I think I'm gonna mount that bugger right there. Short power coming into this side panel going on out the back and my cable from the Delta Pro coming in the front side screw it right down to the floor there so what I have to do now is snip the snip the shore power the incoming shore power enough so that I can connect that up at both ends and it looks like there's just enough slack in that that I'm going to be able to get away with this. Service is shut off, disconnected, no power to anything in here. So now I snip this. That's good. Shut this off, take a little break, and then we'll plug things back in and uh, test it. Let's put it in. Get it hooked up. 100 pounds, this is just, just manageable. 
I'm putting the appliance cord in the back already before I swing it in there because it's hard to get that plugged in once it's in position and get my 30 amp plugged into that because that's also hard to access once it's swung into place because I want to turn it on. Well, this is also pretty hard to see when it's in there but it's this has Bluetooth so you can look at all these features uh, on the on the smartphone once it's powered up. Alright, so that's plugged in. I just leave this coiled up in here. I can't plug this in while I'm powering the RV off of this unit because it gets it confusing and it doesn't like to charge and discharge at the same time. So I only plug that in when I'm on shore power. So it's not quite an automatic system and this isn't supposed to be a standby generator system. There's no mechanism for this thing to auto start itself when it senses the line power going down. Yeah, this is just to keep it out of the rain, out of the weather while it's powering the RV when we don't have shore power such as when we're boondocking. Let me leave that coiled up on top for now. Plug this into my new receptacle on the wall. And then this, this one plugs in there. So that is powered on, it's ready to go, but we are connected to shore power. And we're just gonna listen to this thing in here and listen to it click. And then I'm gonna go out and disconnect my shore power and we should be able to hear this transfer switch click over. Okay, that's powered on, but the transfer switch is refusing any power coming out of that right now. So let's go around here and unplug this. And that's still blowing and short power is disconnected. So my transfer switch switched over and it's now feeding off of the EcoFlow Delta Pro power bank. So I'd say that's a successful demonstration of exactly what I hope to achieve with this installation. This unit is in here out of the weather and uh, out of sight. With the flick of a couple switches, it's able to transfer over and run our air conditioning and other things that'll run the coffee pot, which those are really the two most vital things keeping me coffeeed up and cooled off when we're out boondocking. Project successful. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share.